Want to get to some news. That's uh, attorney Brian Claypool uh, speaking about the young boy who was killed, Anthony Avalos, uh, and the family's demands for more information. The, uh, the father of uh, Anthony Avalos, he's here. His name is Victor uh, Avalos. Uh, we're not going to be taking any questions regarding uh, immigration and his status. He's here right now to mourn the loss of his son, and we'll talk about that. But, Hey, hey Okay. All right. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so, so on June twenty first, uh, two thousand eighteen. Uh, a 10-year-old Anthony Avalos died. Uh, he was allegedly murdered by uh, his mother and his mother's boyfriend. Uh, and since that time, we have now uh, gained access to over 300 uh, internal documents from the LA County Department of Children and Family Services. And today, uh, we are calling immediately for the LA County District Attorney's Office to look into these documents that we have and begin a criminal investigation of select social workers who were on this case. These documents are a recipe for a criminal investigation. Over the span of four years, beginning in 2013, there were 18 separate investigations by DCFS of this household. There were 88, 88 specific investigations into specific child abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse allegations. So we are now talking about 88 investigations. And what that means is 18 times DCFS took a look at this household. Within that 18 times they looked at the household, they investigated 88 specific instances of child abuse, child neglect, and sexual abuse. Of those 88 specific investigations, we have counted 15 substantiated allegations of child abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Of those 15 substantiated, we have counted at least two, possibly three, substantiated sexual abuse claims. Now you tell me if that was not enough information for a well-trained, compassionate social worker to immediately remove and permanently remove not only Anthony Avalos, but all those kids in this house. This is not a case of negligence. This is not a case of the social workers are overworked. This is a case of flat out deliberate indifference toward the life of Anthony Avalos. These records that we have today clearly demonstrate that social workers within LA County DCFS had massive red flags of a household replete with horror, a household where many of the kids were allegedly abused, not just Anthony Avalos. And because of this, we are calling for a criminal investigation. We would like social workers investigated for felony child abuse and criminal negligence. We also have a document here today we're going to pass out. This document is shocking. This document is a safety assessment by the LA County DCFS. And this safety assessment says that the caregiver, it's a, it, the box number six is checked. It says the caregiver 
is unable or unwilling to protect the child from serious harm or threatened harm by others. This may include physical abuse, sexual abuse, or neglect. So we have an internal document from social workers where they are saying that the parent is unwilling or incapable of taking care of these kids. What more does this agency need to know that at that point in time, Anthony and all of those kids needed to be removed from the household? We also have, I'll give you an example. And we'd like an explanation, by the way, from the LA County DCFS on this. I have a document, I'm happy to share this with everybody. We have another document with the referral history. And, and an example on this document, it's 9-18-2015. And this has five allegations listed on this document, five. Four physical abuse and one at-risk sibling abused. And guess what? In the allegation disposition section, there's nothing written, nothing, empty. We found this 15 times. So on 15 occasions in the referral history of the home where Anthony Avalos was murdered, the DCFS didn't even make a notation as to what the disposition was or what was the outcome of the investigation. That is flat out unacceptable. It warrants a criminal investigation. And we finally need to take a close look at the systemic failure within this LA County DCFS. One last example of the chaos, uh, another example of the chaos that exists within LA County DCFS is I found a record in 2015-2016 that clearly indicated there was also domestic violence that was taking place within this household, yet on the date that Anthony was found, on June 20th, 2018, I have another document from the LA County DCFS that says no history of domestic violence. Clearly, this information shows that there is utter and complete chaos that's going on within this agency. How can you miss the domestic violence that was reported two years prior to this young boy dying. Is there a failure of communication within LA County DCFS? Is there falsifying of documents going on within the LA County DCFS? We need a full and utter criminal investigation to make that determination. We're not gonna have one more child die within LA County until we get complete answers, not only civilly, but criminally. The last thing I'm going to say is I have never seen more red flags of an impending death of a child than in the case of Anthony Avalos. 18 visits, 88 allegations, 15 substantiated child abuse allegations and 15 more that we don't even know about. That is deliberate indifference toward the life of a little boy. A couple weeks ago, I'm going to finish with this. A couple weeks ago, the LA County DCFS came out and said that the last report of child abuse at this house was in 2016. Well, we learned through our review of the internal documents that was false. As recent as October 2017, not only was there another investigation of child abuse at the home of Anthony Avalos, but that was also substantiated. So as recent as October of 2017, we had another substantiated child abuse allegation at this home. With that said, I'd like to uh, have Maria and David Barron talk briefly about their reaction to these documents and to 
are calling out for criminal investigation. Thank you. Our nephew, our son, Anthony Nolan Avalos did not deserve this. He did not deserve all the pain he endured. Why? Why did DCFS fail him? Why did he, they not take action? He had so many people that loved him, so many people willing to take him in. Why did DCFS fail Anthony? Anthony was one of the most beloved kids. He didn't deserve what he got. And there was enough reports. The system was supposed to be in place to protect them and they failed to do their job. And now we are feeling the repercussions of it. We're missing our Anthony now because they failed to do their job when they had proof, they had the evidence right there on these documents and they refused to do anything about it. And we're here to make sure this doesn't happen again. No other kid, no family should be having to go through with what we're going through. Because three years ago, he was with us. He was alive and healthy, happy as can be with his siblings. And DCFS took him away from us and gave him back to Heather. And that was it. That was the last time we got to spend time with him. It's not fair. By them not doing their job, they basically signed his death warrant by putting him back in that house with them. They, they had the proof. They had their evidence. They just failed to do their job, whether it was laziness or incompetence. Because even um, most human beings with half these red flags, even if they're not trained, they know to take those kids out of that house, and they refuse to do it. So Anthony had to sacrifice his life in order to save his siblings. You know, he's a true hero. And that's how he will always be remembered in our family. And we will not stop fighting until justice is served. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Victor. I'd like to introduce Victor Avalos. He's the father of Anthony. Uh, he's going to briefly speak about uh, what kind of boy Anthony was and how this has impacted him. Victor. Hi. Well, first of all, you know, my name is Victor. You guys know, should know. Um, you know, every time I used to talk to Anthony, he would be a really good boy. You know, we'd talk on camera. He would be so happy. You know, I'm pretty sure if y'all would get to meet him, you guys would love him. Um, this, as soon as I found this out, I mean, you know, it's just really sad, you know. Um, I really wanted to be there for him, for everything I got through there. So we were in touch as much as we could, you know. Um, so I believe, like David said, you know, we're here. We're trying to make justice for my son. You know, obviously we're all angry. We're, you know, we need to make sure that none of this happens to any other children around or anywhere. So we'll be trying to do our best to get what we need and just for Anthony and just for all those other kids. Does anybody, uh, does anybody have any questions uh, they want to ask Victor or anybody else? Yeah, uh, what, what, you want to do that after or? or? Uh, that's fine, go ahead. I take it he couldn't get to his son, I mean, what was the reason why he yeah, that's a good question. I mean, his, his, no, that's a good question. I, tell All right, uh, the painful case of Anthony Avalos, the little boy uh, who was killed, uh, according to prosecutors, at the hands of his, uh, his mother and her boyfriend. Uh, they are facing criminal charges. What Brian Claypool, the attorney on the left, who's a frequent guest here on the KTLA Morning News, and the family members of the little boy are saying is, uh, DCFS needs to be investigated and specifically the social workers who, according to these documents, uh, investigated 88 specific allegations um, and somehow allowed that boy to continue to stay in that home. Uh, Attorney Brian Claypool, who is representing the father, which is the man you see speaking there at the microphone, said this information that they got, these 300 internal documents from DCFS, it shows utter and complete chaos. In the Department of Children and Family Services, he also says, uh, Attorney Claypool, that he has never seen more red flags. DCFS already facing uh, 
quite a, quite a bit of scrutiny in, in the wake of the death of eight-year-old Gabriel Fernandez. Four social workers uh, in that case are in fact uh, facing charges. Uh, and so this is something that once again puts the spotlight back on these folks. Many of the people who work there, no doubt, they go into this line of work because they do care about children, they do care about families, but clearly something went very wrong here and this boy died as a result. Uh, this is a story we will continue to follow. Uh, we will get Brian uh, on, on the program soon to, to discuss these charges. Right now that we are gonna move, move on uh, with some other news.